Yo, NXT fans, welcome to NXT Talk. That was cringy AF, I don't know why I did it, but I already did it, so I'm just gonna roll and I'm gonna tell you that you're here to hear. You're here to hear what you have missed or what I have missed from NXT for the past two weeks when I was absent from YouTube. The first thing I want to talk about, I'm just gonna order them by importance, I guess, is the Tia Hell and Chase U storyline. I'm really excited to see what is gonna happen with Tia Hell and JC Jane partnering. And I think Blair Davenport also joined the crew and what is gonna happen to Chase U, how everything is gonna affect Chase U. It's not a big thing, but I'm really excited to see what is happening there. Tia Hell is slowly becoming darker and darker and soon she's gonna drop that Chase U logo and everything, which makes me sad. And uh, they are making her a little less energetic and a little bit more going into the dark side. And I really like that part of Tia Hell that she was like, ah, well, let's go, Chase U, blah, 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 blah. I really enjoyed that, but uh, I guess sometimes some characters need some change and I guess we need to see that side of her in order to appreciate the Chase You gimmick more. I'm excited to see what is gonna happen, as I said. Next up, Braun Breaker, Baron Corbin, Von Wagner storyline. Uh, I really enjoy it. As I said a couple months ago, I was really excited to see Braun Breaker versus Von Wagner because I feel like these two guys are kind of at the same level, even though Von Wagner didn't have a championship under his belt. I feel like they're kind of the same level. Uh, yes, Braun Breaker was champion for about a year and what? He didn't have... He, he has a good spear, but what's your point? Before two weeks, they put a banger of a match, in my opinion, and the match ended up how Braun Breaker basically re-injured an old injury of Von Wagner as a kid. I have uploaded online, like, this is the best moment from NXT, how Von Wagner is power bombing uh, Braun Breaker to the announce table and everyone is like, why did he jump? Why did he jump? This shit is so fake. Man, man, I don't know. If, uh, if you want to watch something real, just don't watch any entertainment media. Like, you can watch movies, you can watch series. Like, you, if you try to spot something, you're gonna spot it. Just try to be entertained. This is this is the purpose of the thing even you're watching right now, to be entertained. You're watching TV, you're watching videos to be entertained, not to uh, just nitpick something and be like, this loser, man, this, oh my God, how did he do it? Like, chill, chill, like, and everyone knows that Braun Breaker didn't hit Von Wagner, but it's cool to have some things like this Remember that it's all live at the end of the day and it's really hard also to do stuff live. So give these guys a break. Last week uh, we saw Braun Breaker being in the ring with Baron Corbin. Uh, Baron Corbin started to um, congratulate Braun for ending the career of Von Wagner. But that whole shtick ended up with a match between Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin at no mercy. And I'm really excited to see that match. Baron Corbett is way taller than Braun Breaker, but I hope that doesn't affect the match. I don't know even why I said that. But anyway, I'm really excited about that match. I'm really excited about the story. I hope that until No Mercy, Von Wagner comes back and he inserts himself into the match somehow, or it becomes some triple threat match somehow along the way or at the next pay-per-view. Did you guys know? that Becky Lynch won the NXT Women's Championship. Last night on Raw, even she came out with the NXT belt and she defended it against Natalia. But I was really excited to see Becky Lynch complete, competing for the NXT Women's Championship. I'm really excited to see it because finally that whole division is gonna become relevant again and everyone will start caring. I have nothing against Tiffany Stratton, but who the flip is Tiffany Stratton and why she was a champion? 
was the whole question kind of situation. I have mentioned it in previous videos. If your champion is kind of irrelevant, the whole division is irrelevant because you kind of don't care what's gonna happen, you know? And now when Becky Lynch is the champ, everyone cares about NXT, right? Everyone looks at NXT and they're like, who is the champion? Who is the main contender? What is happening? Why is she defending on the Raw? And all of that stuff. I hope Becky Lynch holds the belt for at least a couple of months until like some tournaments happening on NXT. Maybe she's gonna defend it on Raw a couple of times. Maybe she's gonna defend it on NXT a couple of times. Maybe on No Mercy and she's gonna defend it on No Mercy and keep it for the next pay-per-view. I know that probably it's super demanding for Becky Lynch to be on two shows per week. But I feel like this is a good change until the NXT divisions just builds a little bit more solid. It becomes a little bit more real, more relevant, more polished. So at some point she drops the belt to someone and she really transferred that star power to them. I don't know who that person will be. I feel like it's going to be again Tiffany Stratton, but that's better because Becky Lynch is gonna transfer that star power to Tiffany Stratton and maybe some people will start caring about her a little bit more. Another thing that I'm really really looking forward to, I'm really excited whenever I watch it, is the Heritage Cup tournament. Um, there are like two groups, uh, one group with Butch, Tyler Bate, Charlie Dempsey and Axiom and the other group is with Nathan Fraser, Joe Coffey, Duke Hudson and Akira Tozawa. At the first group, the leading people are Butch and Tyler Bate and basically they're gonna have a match between the group itself to determine who is gonna be the winner from the group. And the other group, the leading people are actually everyone except Akira Tozawa. So basically they're probably gonna have a triple threat match who is gonna determine who is the winner. After that, the winners are gonna face off and they're gonna go to the Heritage Cup finals where they're gonna face the champion who is Namdar. But I'm really excited to see that match. I, I think it's a really cool and fun format. I really like the tweak that they have 12 minutes of a match and if no one wins it's a draw and basically one point for everyone. And I can't wait to see who is gonna win the groups, who is gonna win the finals and who is gonna win the overall cup. For the last two spots in the video, I left the championships. First of all, I want to talk about the North American Championship. The current North American Champion, as you know, Dominic Mysterio. His two rivals right now are Mustafa Ali and Dragon Lee. He's gonna face Dragon Lee next week on Raw. And on No Mercy, he's gonna face Mustafa Ali. I really hate when the champion is having like, for example, like it's in this case, championship defense on Raw and after that on the pay-per-view another championship defense. Like super rarely it happens that the champion loses his title and basically the contender from the first match goes into No Mercy or the pay-per-view. Like all, almost never happens like this. The only case I remember this happening is whenever um, Survivor Series 2020 was happening or 2021, I don't remember exactly the year. Basically, it was Roman versus Drew McIntyre or Randy Orton, whoever wins the match. And Randy Orton was the current champion. And everyone thought that Roman Reigns is gonna face Randy Orton. But in reality, he faced Drew McIntyre because he won. This is the only case I remember that Contender is winning right before the pay-per-view. So basically, unfortunately, I hope Dragon Lee just moves into Raw and this is his first match in Raw and he stays there just for good and not compete for the NA Championship anymore. And we move to Mustafa Ali versus Dominic Mysterio. Hopefully Mustafa Ali winning the North American Championship because it's honestly becoming a little bit embarrassing to be that much time on NXT and losing your mind for the NA title for that long and I feel like if Mustafa Ali wins the North American Championship it's gonna be a great fit for his new gimmick because he is somewhat of a poli politician now. Po poli I don't know how to say that word properly without saying it not properly but he's somewhat of a politician and I feel like it's gonna be a 
perfect fit for his gimmick. And also Dominic at this point, I, I'm not sure if he needs the title because he is super hated. He has super heat in the WWE without any title. And I think he can surely move on to the US Championship or the Intercontinental Championship, even though, as we said in a previous video, Chad Gable is gonna be the one that is gonna take the Intercontinental Championship. Next up, we have the NXT Champion Carmelo Hayes. He also has two people that are fighting for the contender spot. Wesley and Ilya Dragunov. Last week, Ilya Dragunov beat Wesley. It's kind of sad because they try to spin the storyline that Wesley is kind of leaving NXT. And uh, it's a little bit sad because I, I really expected Wesley to win that match and for the final match to be Carmelo Hayes versus Wesley. I really enjoyed that feud more than Ilya Dragon versus Carmelo Hayes, but it's not for me to decide. Anyway, Ilya Dragunov won against Carmelo Hayes. I guess this is the more appealing feud for a lot of people because Carmelo Hayes, in theory, didn't win against Ilya Dragunov. Ilya Dragunov knocked himself out with the title that Trick Williams was holding in the match. Should I say it? Should I save it? Carmelo Hayes is gonna win. Believe it or not, like it or not, Carmelo Hayes is gonna win. Carmelo Hayes is the champ. He's so good for the title. He's so good, period. And uh, even if Carmelo Hayes loses, the right place for Carmelo and Trick, as I said previously, Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, no better place for them. Either way, I'm excited for the future. I'm excited what is gonna happen on NXT tomorrow night. And actually, it was tonight, probably. Because I don't know when I'm gonna release this video. But as of recording it, it didn't happen yet. But now you know. Now you know when I'm recording everything. Oh my gosh. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.